Well, good morning, Cape Island Baptist Church family and friends. Um, if you watched my devotional from Wednesday, um, I gave you a precursor to my message for today, the first Sunday after um, Easter, Resurrection Sunday. And today it's about overcoming, and in, in particular, discouragement. Um, but let's be honest, um, what I'm going to be talking about you know, specifically about discouragement applies to fear, anger, anxiety. Um, you fill in what's occupying your mind today. What are you consumed over? Um, you heard me say a few weeks back, um, what you focus on is what's really going to consume you. Um, a couple years ago, I read a book by Max Licato. Lakato, Licato, however you might pronounce it. Um, but it's called, the book was titled, You'll Get Through This. Hope and help for your turbulent times. But here's the quote, and this quote always has always stuck with me. You'll get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick. But God will use this mess for good. In the meantime, don't be foolish or naive. Do not despair either. With God's help, you will get through this. I've always liked that quote. Um, and my guess is we're all discouraged, right? Some more than others. So before we begin today, let's, let's open with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. Father, even in the midst of the storm, as I look out this morning, it's sunny, it's bright. But Father, even in the midst of a cloudy day, in the midst of a storm, you're there. Your sun is shining. Father, we thank you for bringing us together today. Even though we might not physically be together, we are together. So, Father, open your word for us. That we can glean from it what you want us to glean from it. And, Father, not only would we open it and read it and meditate on it, but, Father, that your Holy Spirit would move in our hearts and in our minds. His Father, without his working, without his indwelling, your word is going to seem void and empty. So, Father, open it up for us this morning as we talk about discouragement and all the other things that ail us. So, Father, guide our thoughts, guide our words, and guide our steps. And we ask this in the name of the crucified one, resurrected from the grave. Amen. What is discouragement? Well, Webster's Dictionary defines it as a loss of confidence or enthusiasm. I've discovered in my life that when something unexpected happens, and in particular, a negative thing, something of a negative nature, discouragement, anxiety, fear, it starts to encroach. And we've had a lot of unexpected happenings of late, have we not? And so we go to God's word and we read and we understand and we see and we come to realize someone knows very well what you are wrestling with. Jesus knew his disciples he knew their weaknesses. He knew what they were going to struggle with. And so he wanted to build their faith and he wanted to give them assurance. But now let's be honest. Okay. It's still possible to have faith, to have understanding and to have assurance and still feel like you fail God. What's the definition of insanity? doing the same thing repeatedly over and over and over while expecting a different outcome. So unless we practice that faith and we apply that understanding and we rest on the assurance of Jesus Christ, we will fail to overcome when the times of testing come. And they will come. Think about Peter when he was walking on water. 
He got out of the boat. Jesus called him out of the boat. He started walking on water. Why did Peter sink? Because he took his eyes off of Christ. Why do we get overwhelmed? Why do we mull down into discouragement and anxiety and fear? Because we take our eyes off of Christ. Maybe you never even had your eyes off of Christ, on Christ. Well, now would be a good time to be putting your eyes on Christ. So for some, this is a reminder where to focus. And for others, this may be a new focus for you. And that's what was happening with, with the disciples in our passages for today that we're going to be going into. Jesus warned them that this would happen. And so Jesus, Jesus is teaching his disciples in John 16, verses 25 through 33, and he tells his disciples about a coming hour of difficulty and suffering. So let's read it. If you got your Bible, open it up. Um, again, I'm reading from the New King James Version, uh, John 16, starting at verse 25. And Jesus says, these things I have spoken to you in figurative language. But the time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figurative language, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. In that day, you will ask in my name, and I do not say to you that I shall pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you, because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from God. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and then go back to the Father. His disciples said to him, See now, you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Now we are sure that you know all things and have no need that anyone should question you. But this we believe that you came from the Father. And Jesus answered him, Do you now believe? Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered, each of you to his own, and you will leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you that in me, in Jesus Christ, you may have peace, in the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. So Jesus is sharing with his disciples that he has told them all of this so that they can have peace. In other words, cheer up. Do not be discouraged. Don't be anxious. Don't be lonely. Don't be fearful. Don't be overcome. But how is that supposed to work? How is telling them that they will experience suffering supposed to give them peace in the midst of that suffering? That's the question we're probably asking, right? And the reality is it works because Christ tells them and us today the ending for overcoming our trials and uncertainties, for overcoming discouragement, fear, anxiety, Whatever. Like I said at the beginning, you fill in what's overwhelming you. Because Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulations. But he says, take heart. I have overcome the world. Christ has overcome the world. So you see, we can have peace. Even as our world goes through a pandemic, and there's still storms, and there's still death, and there's still unexpected happenings. Just because we're going through a pandemic, everything else didn't stop. Things seem so uncertain right now. Yet Christ says we can still have peace. 
The reality is God can transform sorrow into joy. We can radiate peace in the middle of a storm if we allow him to work in and through us. But this principle will not work in our lives. It will not work in your life unless we believe his promises and we seek him. We will not be able to overcome if we do not put our trust and focus on Jesus Christ. And we claim our positions as overcomers and conquerors in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, now you become a son or a child of God and become joint heirs with Christ. You know, we got to trust God to help us when we are overwhelmed with things, especially when they seem uncertain. And the psalmist, I think, really got it right in Psalm 34, 18, when he said, God is near to those who have a broken heart and saves those who have a crushed spirit. Seek God, trust him, pray to him, talk to him. Talk it over with him. And remember, he will always be there. These are holding on to the promises that we read throughout his word. But if we don't read his word, we're not going to get it. We're not going to feel it. We're not going to know it. But he says he will always be there. Deuteronomy 31 verse 6, it says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Or terrified for the Lord your God goes with you he will never leave you nor forsake you did you hear that be strong be courageous do not be afraid or terrified how many believers people who confess Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord are terrified of what's going on why Can I let you in on something? I'm going to let you in, and, and some of you have heard this from me. You know what gets me through my day-to-day -day is knowing that as a believer in Jesus Christ, the worst I will ever experience in my life is what I will experience here on earth. This is temporary. Where I'm going because of my relationship in Jesus Christ, because of what Jesus Christ did on the cross, this is temporary. One day, I don't know when, but one day, no more pain, no more suffering, no more death, no more tears, no more pandemic, no more anxiety, no more fear. That's what I get to look forward to. That's what every child of God looks gets to look forward to. But if you're not a child of God, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, you don't get to look forward to that. So you see, staying focused on God's Word, the written, right, is by the Bible, but also the living Jesus Christ, because we call him the Lagos, John 1, in the beginning was the Word, Jesus Christ is how we overcome. But if you don't have a relationship with him, if you don't know him, if he doesn't know you, as Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Do you know the voice of the shepherd? I'm reminded of the story in 1 Kings 17 when God came to the prophet Elijah. And he gave him food to replenish his strength for the journey that God was sending him on. The reality is God is still doing that today. Just as he did for Elijah, the prophet, he does for us through Jesus Christ. Again, recall what it says in verse 33. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world... In your life now, you will have tribulation. What is a tribulation? Great trouble and suffering. 
I'm not talking about you woke up and you got a flat tire. I'm not talking about, oh, hey, I ran out of toilet paper. That's not great trouble and suffering. A pandemic like what we're going through, yeah, I would say that's a great trouble and suffering. But he says, be of good cheer when you go through these things. I've overcome the world. So because of a relationship with, with and in Jesus Christ, because of Jesus Christ, we can overcome. And remember that Max Licato quote, you'll get through this. Listen to this. You will get through this. It won't be painless. It won't be quick, but God will use this mess for good. There is good that is coming out of this pandemic. And then he says, in the meantime, though, don't be foolish or naive. I'd say, don't be stupid, but don't despair either, because with God's help, you will go through this. Like I tell people, I even tell myself, we take it one day at a time. Sometimes it's an hour at a time. And you get through that hour and you go, oh, I made it. And then before you know it, you're further on down the road. But also look at the contrasting, the contrast in these passages. He contrasts in me and in the world. In Christ, there's peace. In Christ, there's peace. In the world, there's tribulation, there's trouble, there's sorrow, there's pain, there's death. But in Christ, there's peace. And in Galatians 5.22, it says, in Christ, by the Holy Spirit, we get the fruit of the Spirit, which is what? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. This is the position we receive in Jesus Christ. And we need to claim it. And we need to hold on to it. You gotta hold on to it. Because we are in Jesus Christ. If you've confessed in your heart, you believed in your heart and confessed with your tongue, as it says in Romans, that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the King of kings and Lord of lords, you're saved. Doesn't mean your life is going to be easy. Read God's word. You're going to get kind of the opposite picture. But because of Jesus Christ, and a relationship with him, we can overcome and not be overwhelmed by all the tribulations of the world. You have an adversary. You have someone that is working against you. And that's Satan, who wants you to doubt God. He wants you to doubt Christ. He wants you to d doubt the Holy Spirit. And their reality is there can be no doubt about God's concern for our well-being, especially when we're feeling overwhelmed. We see that concern demonstrated last Sunday across the world. We celebrated Resurrection Sunday, Easter, Christ on the cross, followed by a resurrected life an empty tomb. He's no longer here. Where did he go? He went to prepare a place for us. Again, this is temporary. And in Jesus Christ, there is peace. It's a new birth. It's a new life. So you see, just as God nourished Elijah with the bread and gave him nourishment to continue the journey, we too are nourished and strengthened by God's written word and the living word of Jesus Christ. God cared for Elijah. He cared for Paul. He cares for Mike. He cares for Susan. 
He cares for Mark. He cares for Sherry. He cares for Travis. He cares for Adam. He cares for Catherine. Put your name in there. God cares for you. God helped and encouraged Elijah, so he too will help and encourage us. God helped Elijah get a grip on the reality that God was with him. God helps us get a grip on reality that we don't have to be overwhelmed. We can have peace. So do you want to overcome? It says in 1 John 5, 1, Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who begot, also loves him, who is begotten of him. By this, we know that we love the children of God. When we love God and keep his commandments. And what were the commandments that Christ gave? Love God. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Right? And then it says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Do you hear that? For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world? But he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. In Jesus Christ, there's peace. That's how we overcome. Jesus Christ. In the world, there is tribulation. So do you want to overcome? Go to Jesus Christ. Because the reality is, we think this pandemic is a big deal. And it is. I'm not dismissing that. And please don't hear what I'm not saying. I get discouraged. I sometimes have anxiety and I have fears. And when I feel those encroaching, like I said earlier, when I start feeling that, I start going, well, wait a minute. This is not where I'm supposed to go. I go to God. I go to his word. I reach out to a group of men that I have and I say, hey, pray for me. I'm feeling a little overwhelmed or I'm feeling some anxiety. I'm feeling some fear. They start praying for me. I start praying. I start getting into his word. Jesus Christ. He's the one. Again, why did Peter, when, he, when Christ called him out of the boat, started walking on water, why did Peter start to sink? Because he took his focus and he shifted it. And he took it off of Christ. And when he took it off of Christ, he started sinking. And that's the same thing that happens to us. When we start taking our focus off of Christ, we will start to sink. We will get overwhelmed. We're going to get anxious. We're going to get fearful. We probably might even get angry. We could get depressed. And the reality is, it's because we took our focus off of Christ. And again, maybe you've never even had your focus on Christ. Now would be a good time to put it there. Put your focus on Christ. That's how we overcome. Father, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus Christ. It's in him he said we can have peace. In the world, where we live, where we work, where we play, there will be tribulation. There's going to be suffering. There's going to be pain. 
And Father, there's still some uncertainty. Father, I don't know what tomorrow's going to bring. I don't even know what the todays we're going to bring. But Father, I do know you're the one that holds it. And Father, if there's something that's happening in our lives, Father, then let us pose the question, Lord, God, what is it you're asking us to learn here? Because Father, in Christ, there's peace. So Father, help us. Pour out your spirit, that your spirit would move in us for those that are believers, that they would be drawn to you, that they would go out boldly, as your word says, to be your ambassadors, to be the salt and the light into our communities. However that's going to look right now. But that we would go out as your ambassadors. And Father, for those that do not know you yet, they have not gone to the cross. They have not confessed their sins. Father, that your Holy Spirit would move in them, that you would draw them near, and that they would, as it says in Romans, that they would believe in their heart and confess with their tongue that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, move in their lives. And Father, we thank you for your word, the written and especially the living word of Jesus Christ. And Father, may what we think, may what we say, and may what we do bring you glory and honor. Amen. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Now, may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hope you have a peaceful, blessed day. Amen.